Hi, Zuzrin here with another video. I'm gonna say hashtag ad because if you don't know, Path of Exile flew me out to LA. This is one of the videos I'm gonna be making. In this video of Path of Exile 2, I'm going over all the bosses because that was my favorite part. I do have a separate video, which is just going over my first impressions, talking a little bit about everything. And this video is only going to be all the bosses, so I'm not going to be talking about my abilities and stuff like that. We're also going to be looking a little bit about uh, other people like Nugi and stuff, fighting some bosses that I didn't get to fight and some side bosses. I thought it was so wonderful. Like, I, I really feel like they absolutely nailed the bosses. Even the early ones are, are deadly and scary. And uh, yeah, we're going to start now with the equivalent of Hillock. We'll have timestamps in the video as well. So you can just skip through and look at different bosses if there's some you've already seen and you don't really care about what I have to say about it. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the boss killer video. So like I said, this is the bloated miller, the uh, equivalent of Hillock. And uh, well, he is taking a decent amount down from auto attacks. He does spawn adds. Has a pretty bad slam that can actually one shot you. I think he one shot my story. Um, and just like... It really like sets the tone early on. You can see here that it's pausing to try to tell you things. Uh, some tutorial stuff early. It's trying to teach me to roll. I just missed the message. And, and honestly, the fact that the game can pause is really good. I actually kind of forgot that it can pause, so I didn't actually use that to my advantage in boss fights. Um, but you can see here that um, very, very different. And the fact that it's this intense early just, yeah, it really sets the tone for PoE 2. It really is a game that seems like it's going to be all about bossing, which I'm very excited for. And, uh, I'm, I'm so excited to see what endgame stuff is going to be. And I've heard that I'm actually going to be seeing my first time reaction to the Act 1 boss here. Because that's something I did not, um, be able to see myself. Unfortunately, there was a bug where my progression got capped. So this is the Carrion Crone. You can see that uh, she has a lot of different ice abilities, kind of similar to Hail Rank. And it's all about timings, moving while attacking, etc. And dodging around her if you are melee. Quite dangerous, but does go down pretty fast. I actually didn't really have any crazy weapons or anything here as well. So once you get used to dodging her and having that damage uptime, you can see that they, they go down pretty fast. Next up, we have the Devourer, and this was a funny one because some people went instantaneously into this being underleveled. I actually came back to it later, so honestly, this is a very easy fight for me, although I saw somebody was hard stuck on this for 30 minutes because um, it was a very dangerous fight if you uh, weren't overleveled. And you can see that as the slams coming up on the ground. You have adds coming towards you, and you can see that it moves around. And you can see the body, which you can't attack, but you can hide behind it. And uh, that was a very cool thing where the arenas will change, the monsters will move, and, and sometimes give things that you can hide behind. And the boss bar in the middle or the top of the screen, so good. And that move, you can iframe dodge roll through, which you can see I try out here and successfully do. Because I wasn't actually sure if it gave iframes, and I'm like, oh my god. Uh, sadly, I did not have a microphone while recording all of this, but I was uh, plugging out when I realized there were iframes. And here you can see I almost died towards the end. I did an excited swirl with my cursor. Now, I just love how many bosses we get so early because um, for my Ranger playthrough, I basically did two hours on Ranger and I think there's eight or nine bosses that I fight. And that's so cool to me that there's like actual decent boss fights that early in the game. Uh, here we're fighting the Rust King. I did actually die to this on the first try. We are now watching my uh, successful kill. And uh, you see it summons like mobs around you that locks you in. And then it has like a, um, a huge army of uh, weapons or uh, like so many weapons that'll fly across the screen and try to kill you. That one wasn't too bad, but yeah, the one where and like pour his weapons across the screen. That one one shot me when it hit me. I'm pretty happy with the kill speed of bosses when you know what you're doing. There I found a short bow. You saw like the little excited twirl in my, my mouse there. Um, so I'll actually, I'll, I'll look at me identifying it. I wasn't actually going to do that in this video, but I was uh, very excited to find a weapon. You see I got attack speed, which is huge, and flat physical damage to attacks as well. So uh, yeah, really good. Next up here, we have Asinia, the Predator Consort, and there's like two similar bosses here. And we have this one and Draven. She is a lot more dangerous than uh, Draven, but quite a dangerous boss. 
I don't think I died to this. This is my first attempt. On the ranger, I was doing quite a lot of the bosses on the first try. On the sorceress, I will not. I will be mostly showing the ranger fights. That's what I had the most fun with. It's all about moving, and honestly, WAC felt so good for that. Because it, it, like, the PoE one stutter stepping and, like, really having to commit to your attacks makes the boss fights feel so different. You see here that, like, she's pulling in ghosts, which, honestly, I didn't really figure out if that's a cosmetic thing or if it actually empowers her. But she summons Ad, she has the Bone Prison, she has the Slam, so already here she has like similar amount of abilities to our Ubers in the current game. Like it's, it's a little bit crazy how advanced the bosses early on are. They all have like 10 plus abilities. It's very cool. That Slam um, starts like slamming outwards, which it doesn't do at start. But the lower they get, the stronger they get as well. You see here I got a quiver and an alchemy, another like little excited pirouette. Uh, and I got flat lightning damage attacks, which is huge for me. And right afterwards we're fighting Draven. This was like five minutes later, so these things are like back to back. They are actually fighting proper boss fights. And like the stun bar from the lightning ended up playing a huge part in like the difficulty of the boss and uh, getting a little bit extra damage downtime and stuff in. You see the poison is just ticking away. I think probably half. Maybe a third of my damage is poison and like the rest is uh, from the active lightning damage. Very cool. So this is um fairly similar theme to the other fight but like very different moves. And it's like very aggressively after you. You have to dodge a lot more here. I do actually try to use the hole that he came out of. Um, to get him stuck on it and like hide behind it so that he couldn't attack me as much. A little bit worried about dying there at the end. And then right afterwards, another two minutes later, we have Lachlan. So literally like in seven minutes, I kill three big bosses like that. Um, honestly, I, I love that. The boss fights felt they were my favorite part of the game. That felt so much more fun than killing trash monsters and stuff. Because the trash monsters felt very overwhelming. Huh. <sighs> Sorry, it's been a long flight. But yeah, very, very overwhelming, the trash monsters. Here I'm actually fighting a rare monster at the same time in the boss fight. I don't know, I don't think he summoned him. I think that was accidentally pulled. But yeah, very high damage you can see here. Like, I honestly was expecting boss fights to take a little bit longer. I'm surprised I had so much damage. And I haven't found that crazy stuff yet. And uh, this is something we like theorized at Exocon as well, because the characters we had at Exocon had nothing good. Like, we all had bad stuff. And I remember Crip got a weapon, and that, like, tripled his damage. So, I think this hopefully helps, like, put some people that were very skeptical at ease at seeing the damage we have and stuff when we're actually making our own characters. And this is still, like, we're very new. We don't really know what we're doing. We're not overleveling much. So, I think that's pretty cool. Here we have the Executioner. This was a very cool boss fight. Very hard. Execute some poor person there. And then, uh, yeah. Very scary moves. A lot of slams. Some fire slams. Does take quite a lot of damage, but it does summon a lot of adds as well. I thought this move was so cool. I just love the way it like, carves up the ground, makes it molten. It even like, stays there for quite a while until it fades out. You see that I'm like trying to keep my um, poison drop on the ground. Summons that anvil. I know that killed quite a few people. See the stun there is like quite impactful. Very very impactful like stunning them as much as you can. Uh, I know the warriors were stunning the bosses quite a lot. And this is actually the last um, boss that I was able to fight. So we'll show some other ones after this. Because it, uh, it, it suddenly had like a, a, a progression bug that they didn't have a fix for at the time while we were there. And then after this I made my sorcerer. Pretty cool boss fight though. And 
I really enjoyed um, how difficult everything was on the boss fights especially. They definitely want the monsters to be a little bit easier. But, uh, the drops and stuff, like a guaranteed rare I think would be very cool. Then you might even want to like, in the campaign if you're struggling, you can like farm a boss over and over again. Hey, we didn't get to choose names. That was just automated. So here, this is my actual footage from Grindy Games, and they're fighting the Silverback Black Fist. And this is a monk playing. So that's a build we didn't get to try this. I have never played this because I didn't play it at Exocon either. It's all about charge generation and stuff like that. Um, and here you can see, and a few of the melee players said I was worried that like how are the boss going to feel for melee because they're so scary. But they said it was uh, like Alk and Karn said the bosses and and Darth I think as well as playing melee said the bosses felt pretty okay because it's kind of similar vibes to. Um, Dark Souls, where when you are close to them, they do act differently and you can like dodge under their attacks and stuff. But very, uh, it's just so cool bosses in this game. And that's definitely my favorite part. I'm just really looking forward to also see like the end of the Act 1 boss, which we're going to be uh, looking at Noogie's footage later. And it's all about like using utility things like freezing, um, but also just Timing your attacks when the when the monster has uh, downtime, which is very similar to how you approach uh, games like Elden Ring and Dark Souls, where you're waiting for maybe the boss to do a big slam, not against you, or getting a stun in or a counterplay. Boom. Here we have Ignaduk, the Bog Witch. I think this one's supposed to be quite hard. And this is playing on a sorcerer. If I remember, I think uh, Octavian was fighting against this live, and I think he ended up dying once too. Um, it was honestly it looked like quite a hard fight. And Sorcerer is definitely like the weakest of what I've played so far. It does rely so much more on combos than anything else. Um, whereas Ranger was very like PoE one style gameplay where you can just use one ability, and that's generally what I was using: one for clearing and one for bossing. Um, Whereas Witch felt more like you need to set things up and use combos. And you weren't like as much rewarded for it as what I would like to see. You see just, just so much happening. This is this is literally like the, the only difference between our current Ubers and this is like the, the damage levels, you know? Like there's so much complexity in the boobs. And so much going on. It's very easy to get bursted down as well. And remember, even if you get the boss to 10% and then die. You start completely over. It's a very big difference. So close. Nice. Next up, we have the blind beast on a warrior. And the warriors, from what I heard, they were actually, honestly, like, I heard people were literally 20 second killing the bosses on warrior. It was, like, a little bit clunky to attack and stuff. But it really had the damage. And apparently leap sum was insane. Um... So I'm really looking forward to see like footage from Al Kaiser and Karn and stuff and see what that ended up looking like. But I've heard that it was quite fun um, with some room for improvement still. But uh, this boss gets stunned incredibly fast but then doesn't get stunned very long. Um, you can see that uh, like armor breaking. I, I remember there was something about stuns in this boss. Also looks a little bit like Katava, like a mini Katava. Maybe it only had like a mini stun, like the, not like the full stun that other bosses did. That's Sunder. I wish it didn't have like the jump into the air. That looks very clunky to me. Here we have Wrathbreaker. I think I fought this at Exalcon. With my, yeah, with Huntress, which is what he's playing on. It was a pretty decent fight. It has a lot of ads. Now, I actually, uh, this is the, the Huntress. So this is not a Ranger. And uh, both the Huntress and Ranger really felt like you could use one skill. So I used the, the Lightning Javelin that they do end up using here at some point, I think. I see it on the bar, at least. That one. That's what I use. Pretty much only that. It was really nice having that like one uh, button ability. And you can see here the clear speed and stuff is a little bit better. Here is Sekotal, and I'm not sure. I wonder if this is the Act One end boss fight. But you can see that there's so much more going on, 
and um, this is the pre-approved footage from GDD. We are actually going to be watching New Yi fight a lot of bosses after this. Uh, but I did want to like go through all we had here, and uh, it's just so much going on, and I love that. It's so hard. Like there's just so much going on. The bosses are like, pretty tanky, and yeah, just the like crazy diversity of skills. It's putting like different things in the arena. Um, and you can see here that both freezing and stunning bosses is super important. Like a very big part of the game and it really like gives you some leeway, especially for things like energy shield recharge. So you have like a, honestly that might, might even one shot. And you see that's kind of similar to some of the um, expedition boss we have, you know, the, the one with the mirrors where you show like the, the webbing before it attacks. Quite a lot of damage. Sorx seems de pretty decent on like bosses that have like big hitboxes um, and things like that and really like getting the damage out there. And honestly what like stood out to me the most like the, the sorcerer is mostly like it has um, it needs number adjustments but like the abilities and stuff like felt really good and very fun uh, if they, they get some love. And I did mention I had an unfortunate bug that uh, messed up with my progression but Nugi has been so kind to share his footage of um, bosses like the Act 1 and boss and, and everything. So we're now going to look through the bosses New Year is fighting. A lot of these is going to be my first time seeing them as well. So I'm uh, I'm really excited to uh, see what kind of like different bosses. The further I've heard the Act 1 and boss is really spicy as well. So let's uh, take a look at that. <clears throat> this is going to hurt. I have no idea what this does. You do notice like so many of those... What? Was that a bait? Like a, a fake out? Oh my god, look at Noogie having his map open. Wow, that was a lot of damage. I was so proud of myself. I like heard the future screams of people saying like, Wah, he's got the map up. So I, I removed my map and all of my footage. Well, unless I really needed it. See, like we don't need to fight this boss. It was just sitting there anyway. We're just disturbing this poor boss. Wow. There's so many slabs and stuff. And like, you quickly learn that there are some moves you just really gotta like stop attacking during and focus on moving. And there's like a lot of different phases, a lot of different like, things change a lot as they get to like different parts of uh, health. If you're wondering why so many people have the um, overlay on, it's just like, we're so used to it, we don't notice it. Cause you're, that's usually what you look at to like move your character. I know a lot of people hate having that open. But when you play it for so long, it's just it's like your nose, you don't see it, even though you always see your nose. Grants 10 maximum life. So that's actually like uh, a thing that um, a lot of the different uh, bosses drop you like that type of like quest item that will increase and give you some powers it's like a nice checkpoint that you really want to hit all right we're coming up on a new boss tentacles tentacles in my path of exile it's like eating stuff i wonder what happens if you go close to the um... maybe you don't want to get too close Is it just seafood? Is it just a snack for the boss? Maybe he has so many support gems. Iron count. So Nuzi's like full lightning. He doesn't seem to use any poison stuff or very little poison stuff. He's using one something that poisons. They get to wow! That's cool. Oh wow. Oh, he doesn't have a thawing potion. Maybe he didn't find one. Wow. They're very, like, on you. Wow. It just blows me away that if we're seeing this type of boss during the campaign, what kind of bosses are we going to see during maps? And, like, imagine, like, our current equivalent of, like, elders and stuff. I do love that we have iframes. That does feel so good. 
so many different cool abilities. I really like the one where he pushed him up against the wall. I wonder if he's gonna do Deathless first try. So Jonathan did say that he didn't actually want people to do most fights Deathless, that you're supposed to like die and learn a move and be like, oh, okay. Wow, that looks so cool. That looks so Souls-like. That looks so Souls. That's so sick. Look at that boss. The deeper voice. Wonder if him stunning him there interrupted his move with the light from the sky. I do wonder how they're gonna make it feel as good for melee. Now a lot of the melee players that were playing said bosses felt pretty good, like kind of like Dark Souls. It's not like you want to be ranged in Dark Souls either. Uh, and that it's like you're so close to it that it's easier to dodge and stuff, but I didn't really get to try it so I'm like curious how that will feel. A lot of ants. This reminds me a little bit of um, Morana. Just a cooler Morana. Oh, wow. That was smart. So if you don't know, you can portal out. Made a boss fight to go get fast charges. Man, the stuns are so big. That's such a cool fight. We have the Crow Bell, which we have seen before. I think we saw this at Exocon. This is the one that goes through lots of walls and stuff. It's like a, a boss fight that moves. I'm so sad I didn't get to like fight this. There's so many just like new concepts and stuff. Yo, look at Nui taking away his map. Foggers. It's actually really hard to do it. Gonna get a stun off here. I wonder if you have enough damage, if you can like bypass stages and stuff, especially during the stun phase. Wow. I was just picking up a fucking bell. I wonder if it's hiding. This is going to hurt. I honestly am surprised it didn't like go to full in this tiny arena. Cool. Here we have another one. I'm not seeing this one. Rujia, Rujia, the Dread Engineer. Wonder how strong things that like let you put things down in advance will be, so you can like insta burst the boss. Jesus. So stuns down. Damn. He's doing so much damage as well. Wow. Clean first try, Nugi. Oh. Second phase? No. Once it drops loot, you know you're good. Some some game should make a boss drop loot in the first stage. Just like a little bit, just to like trick people. Okay, right, we have Lim the Impaler. Wow. You see here that Nugi's really done some sick damage down. We did actually see, um, I was uh, looking at Sneaky a little bit and he had a lot more damage even. So there are some builds like Sneaky was literally running up to bosses and instantly killing them. Although I do think something like that would be a uh, nerf. I was so lucky with the stun on the boss at the end there. Wow, that was a sick clean kill. Next up, we have the Perennial King. Dude, it's just such a different, like, everything from Pee-Wee One. Oh, oh. You really notice once you start getting support gems and stuff like that and some gear, it makes such a big difference. It makes it feel a lot more like Pee-Wee again. 
I remember this is the equivalent of Act 2. Maybe the equivalent of Act 3. So it's still pretty early in the game. Like this is like maybe at the point you're starting to get like your library support gems and things like that. Maybe even earlier. Like this is maybe like Val Oversoul slash Piety level. That's a cool move. So many slams. How oh, cool. Perennial King. I don't even know what that word means. Perennial. I'm curious. Define perennial. Lasting or existing for a long or infinite time. Enduring and continually reoccurring. Does that mean he can't die? Is he gonna respawn? It's been a long fight. I would be surprised if it has stages. Never mind. Never mind. Okay, cool. He controls the very sands against us. Oh, this is like a gauntlet type this is thing. No natural sandstorm. We must battle sorcery with sorcery. Let us return to the caravan. Oh, okay, cool. So I guess you continue that boss fight later. Then you can see it goes back to the caravan here. We can show that off a little bit. That looks pretty cool. So from what I understand, sadly, I didn't get to this part. You get to like choose where to go here. Like it's not linear. So you can choose what area and what bosses to fight first and stuff. So you have some uh, some more choices here. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this compilation of PoE 2 bosses that we've seen so far. So many of them are just really cool. And I can't wait to see like what is the end game going to look like? Like what kind of crazy bosses are we going to get? And uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully you understand why I'm thinking like I'm probably not playing this on hardcore to start with. It does look like the type of stuff where you have to really learn it on software first um, before you start playing. But either way, I hope you guys are enjoying all the PoE2 content. Again, huge thank you to GGD for flying me out and including me. And yeah, sub if you liked the video, but more importantly, try to die less than I do.